we're picking up where we left off, doing area and perimeter and circumference we'll see in a minute. Okay. Um, before we get going on that, anybody have any general questions or Hawks questions or anything you can think of? Okay. The whole cloudy rainy day. I sure have been been hard to get awake today. So I'm with you. Okay, if you feel that way too. All right, this will be a good warm up for us. Um, we've got a bridge that consists of trusses that are parallelograms. And we've got an outline of one of the trusses. Let's find the area of each of the trusses. Okay. So with a parallelogram, that's one of our easier area formulas. Just base times height. And it's really similar to a rectangle. It's just a little leaned over. Okay. So our base is always going to be our bottom number. And then height, we always need a vertical line. So our height of six meters here. Let's see what we get. We get uh, 13 times 6. Uh, let's see, what is it? We get 78. Our units here are meters, and since it's area, we have square meters. So, not too bad, just straight up using the formula. Hey, the. Well, I started to say the. Hardest part's picking out what shape it is, but it really it says it's parallelogram, so that wasn't even too bad on this one. I guess the trickiest part's making, well, that, that was just not bad. That's not a whole lot tricky to that one. Okay, so good warm up problem, good warm up problem. Okay. Um, we just have a couple, couple more in this section. Okay. Um, Here's, we've done done a little bit of triangle stuff, but here's a here's one more. It says we've got a triangular plot of land with the given dimensions. We want to fertilize the plot. One bag of fertilizer covers 15 square meters. How many bags of fertilizers do fertilizer do we need? And so we're trying to cover it. So that's an area problem. So, area of a triangle, one half base times height. Here, 12 is our H, B is 31. And the vertical one's always going to be the height. And so, let's see what we get there. Um, You can, you can do it all at once in the calculator, that's fine. I just, for some reason, did it in two steps on this one. So 186, what I got, and then it's meters and it's area, so it's square meters. And then, how do we answer the actual question here? It says if one bag covers 15 square meters, how many bags of fertilizer do we need? We just divide. Right, so we know the area we need to cover is 186 square meters. Divide that by 15. See what we get. Some decimal. Um, 12.4. So if we're actually buying bags of fertilizer, remember we're thinking about these in practical terms. Right, so 12 is not enough. So we need to buy 13 bags. We'll have some left over. I'm just rounding up. Questions on that one? Nothing? Who's sleepy today? Most of you, yeah, okay. We'll make it through it. We'll make it through it. 
get out of here and go get you some lunch here in a little while. And if you don't have another class right there, right, right after this. All right, so let's see one more of these, and then we'll do a little bit of circles. Okay, so one more. These are about as tricky as our basic shapes could get. Here we're dealing with a trapezoid. So we don't have to do anything fancy with it. We're just trying to find the area. A couple different ways you can do this one. You can use the formula for area of a trapezoid. I will make sure to put that on the formula sheet if you like doing it that way. So it's one half times base one plus base two times H. It doesn't matter which one you call base one, which one you call base two. Um, these two are going to be our bases. It's the two that are parallel to each other. And then nine would be our height. If we want the area here, that'd be one half, 12 plus 17. Times nine. Let's see. Uh, one thirty point five. Let me check that I'm not confident I hit the right button. Yeah, one thirty point five and our units here are feet. Weird. So that works. The other way you could do this one potentially is you could split it up into the rectangle and the triangle. On the triangle, this side would be nine. Oh, pardon me. Then what about the bottom piece? What would this little piece be? Right here. The whole bottom 17. Yeah, this part's 12, so that part would be five. So if you wanted to, you could do it with the triangle and the rectangle formulas and add them together. On that one, it's probably easier just to use the trapezoid formula. You could do it either way. Questions on using that formula? Uh, all right, let's do some circles okay. really quickly. So with our polygons, we talked about perimeter and area. Um, we want the same ideas for circles, but with circles, we don't call it perimeter because we're not adding all the sides together. And with circles, we give it its own name. We call it circumference. Okay. And Two different ways you can use the formula. They're, they're really the same thing, but um, we just have two versions. So if it gives us the radius, we can use 2 pi r. Or if we're given the diameter, we can use pi d, pi times the diameter. And that's really the same thing because 2 times the radius is the diameter. And then one other little word of caution here in hawks, and when we do them, we're always going to estimate for pi. We're not going to like use the pi button on our calculator. So for pi, um, we're going to use 3.14. So if you hit the pi button on your calculator, it'll throw your answer off a little bit. Be aware of that. As a math teacher, I like using the pi button better, but in Hawks, it gets you to use 3.14. So we'll do, we'll do them that way together. Right. And then we also want area, our circle. Okay. So we really just have one, one form of our equation for area. It's pi times r squared. Or 3.14 times r squared is what we'll do. So... You just have to be a little bit careful if it gives us the diameter. Okay. 
And if it gives us the diameter and we want the radius, the radius is the diameter divided by two. So just make sure you're looking for that. Okay? Most people remember to divide by two, but occasionally somebody will be in a hurry and they'll plug in the diameter number where they should have put in the radius. Okay? So just watch out for that. Just a couple of these, and then we'll go on to three dimensions. Right, let's look at our first one here. It says we've got a fish tank with a circular top. has a radius of 15 centimeters. If we were drawing a top-down view, a radius of 15. we got Jeff here that wants to cut a cover for the fish tank out of glass. We want to find the area and the circumference of the cover of the tank. So it gives us a radius. So for area, we don't have to do anything special. It's just 3.14 times the radius, 15 squared. And you do have to be a little careful with the order of operations here. We need to do the 15 squared part first. If you punch it like that into your calculator all at once, it's okay. It'll it'll do it. But um, if you're doing it step by step, you need to do the 15 squared part first. Okay. So here I get 706.5 times 15 in centimeters, and area is square units, so square centimeters. R squared, or 3.14 R squared. And then the circumference on this one, since it gives us a radius, um, we can use the two power version. Two times 3.14 times 15. Okay, gives me 94.2. And circumference, like perimeter, is just in base units. Okay, so it's just centimeters. Mm -hmm. On that one, is that coming out around? Right? Yeah, same way. Okay. I do occasionally push the wrong button on the calculator or something. So if you notice that you get something different, say something. All right. One more. Okay, we'll do one more circle problem. This one says find the area and circumference of a circle with a diameter of 10 inches. So this time it's given us the diameter. And it's all the way across. So our diameter is 10. Our radius will be five divided by two. Okay, so for area, be pi times the radius squared. This one I get seventy-eight point five, where in inches, in area is square units, so square inches. And for circumference, you can use either version. I'm going to do um, pi times the diameter, 3.14 times 10. It gives us 31.4. And it's just in regular old inches. Questions on any of those? Again, I'll give you formulas, so don't worry about memorizing formulas. Just make sure you've got your list of formulas so you have everything you need when you're doing the assignment. And uh, most people don't have too much trouble with this section, so um, we won't bore you to death with it. 
All right, so that's 6-2. Our other section in Chapter 6 we're doing is 6-3. And in 6-3, we talk about some three-dimensional measurements here. So namely, we're going to talk about volume and surface area. So we had perimeter, which was if we had a flat shape, that was like the we add all the sides up, so that's like the distance you have to walk to go around it. And we had area, which with a flat shape, that's like how many square units of something you would have to have to cover it up. Or how many square units of inside space it has. With volume, and we're moving to three dimensions. So two-dimensional shapes don't have volume. In three dimensions volume, we're thinking like if we have a box, how much space do we have inside the box? Or how much will our box hold? And then surface area, we're talking about surface area is a little strange because we're dealing with three-dimensional shapes, but surface area is a two-dimensional measurement. With surface area, if we have a box, we're thinking about like adding the area of all the sides up. We'll we'll get there. It's a little bit harder to think about initially. All right, so let's look at some volume formulas. I know that's exciting looking at um, formulas. But we need them. We need them. Um, as usual, if we have something that's rectangular, that's our easiest one. So we just added one dimension to our rectangle. Now we've got some height or depth, however you want to think about that. So we've got one more dimension we have to multiply by. So instead of length times width for area, we have length times width times height. One little pet peeve here. Um, a lot of people, especially in the South, what they call them? All right, so it's length, width, and then for some reason, a lot of people in the South, especially, also say height for some reason. It's not, it's just height. No H on there. Well, I mean, there is an H, but not, and I left it out. Height, okay. not height. Okay. Sorry about that. I was so anti that H being there, I left out one that's supposed to be there. I'm not going to pick on you or anything if you say height. I mean, just, just something to be aware of. There's our rectangular. If we have our special case for all the sides of the same length, um, in two dimensions we call that a square. What do we call it in three dimensions? If all the sides are the same. You are sleepy today. We have all the sides the same in three dimensions. A cube. A cube. And again, you can just use the rectangular solid. You can just still do length times width times height. Um, it just turns out that all three numbers are the same, so we can write it differently. We can write it as side cubed. So nothing too remarkable there. Um, don't even. I'm trying to remember. I don't. I don't even think I gave you any sphere problems. Okay, so you probably don't have to write this one down. But um, I think we've got a surface area problem, but not a volume problem with sphere. But um, it's four thirds pi r cubed. You want it? And got one more. Hence, we have a cylinder. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, our textbook gets really wordy with describing this shape. They call it a right circular cylinder. Typically, that's what we mean when we say cylinder. That's like a like a can of soup or something. Okay. All right, so 
for that one, we're really just adding the one dimension too. So if you look at the just the first two numbers, it's pi r squared, that's the area of the circle on the end, and then times the height. So not too bad. Okay. All right, let's let's look at a few. A few problems here. Okay. It says, assume we want to build a concrete patio in the back of our house. Your patio is going to be 18 feet long, 12 feet wide, and 6 inches deep. Okay. So part A, we want to know how many cubic yards of concrete we need to build the patio. Okay. So that's volume. Okay. Volume is cubic units. So here we have one little issue. Okay. It's rectangular, we're assuming, doesn't, doesn't tell us that for sure, but we're assuming it's rectangular. Okay. But our issue we have, okay. for one thing, two of our dimensions are in feet, one's in inches. Okay. So if we're using our formula, we want all of our dimensions to be in the same unit. So let's do a little conversion here. So we've got 18 feet, 12 feet, and 6 inches. Okay. So what do you want to change them to? We have choices. And we could change everything to feet, get our answer, and then figure out, change it to cubic yards when we get to the end. Or we could change it to cubic, we could change it to yards now, and before we multiply. Either way will work. I think changing it to yards now may be a little bit easier, so let's do that. Um, all right, so how I many feet are in a yard? May I remember? Let me, what you got? Three, yep, yeah, three. Okay, so three feet in a yard. Three feet in a yard, so we can, these first two are pretty simple. I right, we can just divide by three. Okay, so that'll be six yards. That'll be four yards. I guess I should have put an S on the other one. Okay. The inches are a little bit trickier. Instead of thinking about three feet, it'll be better for us to think about inches. Okay, so if there are three feet in a yard, how many inches are in a yard? Can you remember that? So how many inches are in a foot? Twelve. So if we have three of those, we get 36 inches in the yard. 36 inches in the yard. So we can divide by 36 inches here. So if we do six divided by 36, I'm going to round a little bit. That's one out of six is what that is, one over six. So we'll call that point one, six, seven yards. Okay. And that makes our, our calculation easier. So we'll the volume here, just multiply these three together. So we're going to get about just a little bit over four, and we're down with yards and its volume, so we have cubic yards. And I, I got like 4.008. Well, I said I think it's a little bit easier to do the conversion as before, is if we wait to the end, um, 
a little bit confusing because if we have one cubic yard and we want to know how many cubic feet that is, it's a little bit tricky. And because there are three feet in yard, but we're cubing and we're doing it to the third power, the one cubic yard is 27 cubic feet. Three times three times three. Right? That, that can be a little confusing. So, um, all right, let's look at B. B says if a concrete mixer truck holds five cubic yards of concrete, how many truck loads of concrete will be needed? So if a truck holds five cubic yards, how many do we need? We need four cubic yards, so how many truckloads do we need? Oh, come on. One, just one, and just one. And we'll have some left over. Because it, as the truck holds five, we only need four. So we're in good shape. One truck will do the job. So the, the volume is not the tricky part on that one. The unit conversions are the tricky part on that one. Okay. Um, you won't have too many where you have to do all that. Yeah, so. Don't fret over that part. Okay. All right, let's look at a swimming pool. This one, a picture really helps. So I've got little diagrams on the next slide here. It says if we want to build a swimming pool in our backyard, but the city where we live has a restriction on the volume of water that the pool can hold. You can get weird stuff like that in regulations. It says the restriction is that pools may contain at most 4,800 cubic feet of water. We want to build a pool that's 16 feet wide, 24 feet long, and has a depth that varies from 2 to 12 feet on a constant slope. So it's going to start off 2 feet deep on one end and have a constant slope down to 12 feet deep on the other end. We want to know if our pool is going to be legal. So this one's really helpful. We've got so much going on, it's really helpful to have a little sketch. Okay, so there's our side view of the pool. Starts off 2 feet deep. And then goes to 12 feet. Okay. 24 feet long. So to me, the easiest way to work this one, I think, okay, is for us to figure out the area of this side. Okay. And then, sorry, I went the wrong way. Figure out the area of the side of the pool. And then we can multiply by how wide the pool is. Okay. So we're kind of starting off with the hard part, and then we'll end up just having to multiply by 16 feet wide. Okay. I think that's our easiest approach here. So if we're looking at looking at the side view of our pool here, what shape's that one? What would you call the shape of that side view? we got two parallel sides and then two sides that are not parallel. I don't remember. That's a trapezoid. We gotta go back to the last section just for a little bit. So with a trapezoid, if we want the area, Here's our formula. The parallel sides are going to be our bases. It doesn't matter which one you call, base one or base two. And here what we're thinking about, we're thinking about rotating this. Okay, where the 12 foot side is the bottom side. Then the 24 foot side would be our height. Be our height. So 24 would be 
H here. So let's do that part. So the area of the side view of our pool here I get 168 square feet. And now the dimension we're leaving out, we're leaving out how wide the pool is. So to get our volume, we multiply by how wide the pool is. So um, got 168 square feet, side view times 16 feet wide, get a volume of 2,688 cubic feet. Here, if we, we had square feet from doing our area, and if we do square feet times feet, we get cubic feet, yeah. which is what we want with volume. There's the volume of our pool. Then we want enough if our pool's legal. I don't remember what the number was. Let's look. Um, it says we can hold up to 4,800 cubic feet of water. Is our pool okay? Yep, it's good. Yep. We could make it bigger if we wanted to. That one's a little tricky because we have it had a weird shape. That's a good strategy if you have some weird shape that we don't just have a formula for volume. And you can kind of think about finding the area of one of the sides and then multiplying by your other dimension. Uh, let's see. Think about some drums here. Um, got a controversial statement if you're a drummer here. It says the sound of drum makes varies according to the diameter and depth of the drum. That's sort of true. Kind of assuming that the materials for the make of the drum remain the same. Uh -huh. So we want to find the volume of air that would be in two different size drums. On A, it says find the volume of air in a snare drum that has a diameter of 14 inches and a depth of 5 inches. Okay, so here's our diagram for A. So what shape is this? Right, top and bottom are circles. And then we got flat sides. So that's cylinder. Yeah, it's cylinder. So we want the volume of cylinder. That's pi r squared h. And so our height here is five. You have to be a little careful because it gives us the diameter. I have to divide by two, so r will be seven. And then we plug in again. We're going to use three point one four as an estimate for pi. So. 3.14 times 7 squared times 5. What do we get there? So I get 769.3. We're in inches. We're doing volume, so we get cubic inches. You do have to be a little bit careful here. Um, make sure you get the order of operations correct. And one common mistake I see people make sometimes is that they'll accidentally square this one. They accidentally square the height instead of the radius. So just watch out for that. Volume on that one. B, we're doing the same same idea, but we're doing a different drum. Going to a tom here. So same formula because it's still a cylinder. The 
but this time it does give us R, the radius. So we have 3.14 times 5 squared times 8. On this one, we get 628 we're in inches. It's volume, so cubic inches. We're still on doing volume of cylinder. Once you get where you can plug in the formulas, if you have just a regular shape where you're just plugging into a formula, they're not they're not bad. Not bad. All right, so that's volume. So our last dimension we want to talk about is surface area. Um, so the idea with surface area, we're thinking about we have a three-dimensional object, three-dimensional shape, but what we're measuring is we're measuring a we have a two-dimensional measurement area. Okay, it's in the name area. But we're thinking about the area of material it would take to like cover up the outside of our shape. Okay? So you think about like wrapping a present okay? or painting a box. You wanna if you have a box, you've got to paint six different sides, right? Front, back, left, right, top, bottom. And with surface area, since we are measuring area, we have square units again, even though we're dealing with a three-dimensional object. Okay, so with surface area, we kind of have a weird mix of 3D and 2D. So, look at our first surface area formula here. And on this one, I don't particularly, I, I don't keep the formula in mind when I'm doing a surface area problem. Um, I'll, I'll tell you why. The, the formula looks like a mess. Right? Um, it says we want the surface area of a rectangular solid of a box. Okay. Um, it's two times the length times the width plus two times the length times the height, plus two times the width times the height. Okay. So that's fine, okay. um, but all, all this is doing, okay. to me it's just easier to remember what we're trying to calculate. Okay. All this is doing is if we, if we have some type of box, okay, um, this is saying like if we call this the We can call that the front and the back of the box. Right? So length times width, okay, the front and the back are going to be the same dimensions. So once we find that area, we'll multiply by two. Okay? Because we've got two sides that are the same. Okay, this one we could call left and right. So again, the left side and the right side of the box are going to be the same dimensions. Here we're calling it length times height. So then we multiply that by two because we have two that are the same. And then the last one is the top and the bottom. Okay, so again, the top and the bottom are going to be the same dimensions. Here we're calling it width times height. So since it's the same, we multiply by two. So, because we have a total of six sides around, so top, bottom, left, right, front, back. So, if you want to use the formula, that's fine. Um, it just, to me, it's a lot to keep up with in a formula. Um, I just usually pick two dimensions at a time, multiply it by two each time. Hmm? So, let's do a surface area problem. Okay. All right. This one says, Amy's icing a cake for her sister's birthday. It's a half sheet cake, measures 12 inches by 18 inches by 2 inches. 
Part A says find the surface area of the cake that will need icing. So right away they're throwing us a curve. Because on a sheet cake, half sheet cake, what parts of the cake do we normalize? We normalize the front and the back, the left and the right, and the top, but not the bottom usually. You could if you wanted to, but we're assuming we're not going to ice the bottom here. So we've got to leave one side out. So here, here's our little diagram. So trying to find surface area. I don't know why I made it look like that. We'll just call it SA, a surface area. So what I'm gonna do, okay, you can use the formula, but you gotta remember not to multiply the, the top bottom part by two on this one, because we're not gonna ask the bottom. So to me, it's easier just to do it in three pieces, okay? So I'm gonna do the, find the front and the back, okay? So the front, if we're just looking at the area of the front rectangle, that's going to be 18 by 2, 2 inches deep, right, or 2 inches tall, if you want to think about it that way. So here, the front and the back, I know they're the same, so I'm going to multiply by 2. And then 18 inches across and 2 inches tall. Okay. So what's it, 36 times? Uh, 72 square inches of cake. That's the front and the back. Okay. And I'm going to do the left and the right sides together. And so over here on the right side, it's easier to look at the way it's drawn. And so the right side is 12 inches by 2 inches. Left and the right side will be the same. So I know I need two of those. They're 12 inches by 2 inches. Oh, what is it? 48 square inches. That's the left and the right. And then we just want the top, we don't want the bottom for this problem. Okay, so the top is going to be 18 by 12. Okay. We're not going to multiply that one by 2 because we don't want top and bottom. We just want one. Okay. That's 216 square inches. So that's the top. And then I'm just going to add all these together. That'll get my total surface area. Okay, so 72 plus 48 plus 216. 336 square inches. Okay. Questions on what we did on that one? That one's a little more complicated than some of the ones we've been doing. Okay. All right. And then we get part B thrown in here. Part B has nothing to do with surface area. So don't try to think in terms of surface area. It says if the cake is cut into pieces that are two inch squares, how many pieces of cake can be served? Okay. So if they're two inch squares, all we're thinking about it's like we can think about the top top down view. Okay, so we're eighteen by twelve here. And what we're doing, we're cutting two inch squares into our cake. We want to know how many of those we can make. So I guess if you wanted to, you could count. Okay, like you could count over by twos. But we can also figure out the area. So that would be 18 by 12. So what was that, 216? 
and then the area of each little slice would be two by two, so that'll be four square inches. So we can do 216 divided by four. Figure out how many slices we get there. Four little pieces of cake. That's a tiny little piece of cake, but fifty-four slots. Question on that one. Uh, my confidence is not high in here that if you have a question, you'll ask it. So, now we're going to have to, we'll, we'll figure something out. I know I can stress out about that every time we meet just about. So, um, quit complaining and come up with some kind of idea. I looked for a good pinata, but I can't really find one I liked. So we'll figure something out soon. Okay. Uh, that's a good stopping place for today. Okay, so we'll finish up on Friday. We've got a few more surface area problems to do, but we'll we'll be able to do that and have a not whole time class Friday like I like to do. So that'll be good. If you didn't get on the signing sheet, make sure you get on there before you leave.